Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with team number 3357, the Comets, here at the West Michigan District event. The Comets already won the Battle Creek District and are looking for more with their sleek and fast machine. They have an accurate shooter, high-powered autonomous, and so much more. Here we have Lucas, Hendrick, Addison, and Alex to talk more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Lucas, why don't you get us started off with the Game Piece Pass? Yeah, so first up, we have an under the bumper intake. This uses silicone coated polycarb rollers to intake the game piece. And then our indexer is very similar. Same silicone coated rollers on polycarb tubes. Both are running off of a Neo. Ending up with our shooter, we have a two Neo drive. The first Neo is powering these first two, th this first set of rollers. And then the second Neo is powering the second set of rollers. The first set will take the note up to initial velocity and then this will uh, bring it up to the final velocity so that this one is the one that sags and these don't sag at all. Alex, do you want to tell us a little bit more about some of the features your robot has beyond just the notes? Yeah, so beyond what Lucas talked about with some of the pivoting mechanisms, we also need to be able to aim our shooter. So we went through a lot of time and effort to get this right on our robot. Uh, to start, the way we're driving the pivot with this rack gear here is with a roller pinion uh, setup similar to what Code Orange did in 2019. We actually borrowed that idea from them. And what it does allows us to actually manufacture it. We need, a, we need a bigger end mill to cut it, which is a lot nicer. And it also is very accurately position-wise. Um, if you want to drive it, Hendrik. So it lets us have really accurate control of our angle, which gives us very far range. So we can come down. I believe currently the soft limit is set at 21 degrees, which gives us uh, past the wing line in terms of range. And then on top of that, one of the biggest mechanism sides of things we've revised since our last event is actually at the base of our pivot mechanism. Originally, we were using an acetal block uh, that rotated inside of the clamp that acted as a sliding part. But if there was any racking in the shooter deck, it would snap and we were losing accuracy on our encoder. So we actually switched to a full aluminum setup with some of our machining abilities. Uh, using an SRX mag encoder from CTRE so that it goes directly into the motor controller, which is really nice because that lets us not have to worry about timing issues. It's going directly into the motor controller for feedback. On top of that, we're also using two spherical bearings in the pivot that allow it to swivel slightly. Uh, and what that allows us to do is the two sides can find its own axis so that we're not adding that extra force you're seeing with the acetal blocks and it was breaking. On top of that, or I guess on a side note, we have the swerve modules as well. Last year and all the years previously, we've run tank drive on our robots. We were kind of known for that, but especially with this game being so as open as it is, we knew we kind of wanted to switch and we were finally ready to do so. Uh, we're using the max swerve modules because we kind of already integrated into the Rev ecosystem pretty well and we know how to make those guys work. Uh, and we really like the modules a lot, especially with how small and lightweight they are. We have some fancy uh, swerve covers on top as well mostly just for looks for the orange details, but they are actually made up, printed on an Onyx printer through one of our sponsors, JR Automations. Uh, and it gives it a really durable cover that we haven't had any issues with breaking those motors. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your amp mechanism? I understand that's been a revised a little bit too. Do you want to tell me how that works? Or Addison, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so week one, we didn't really have a good amp mechanism. We just kind of assumed that we would be able to do it. Um, and because we're shooting from so far underneath the amp, it's a little hard to get it in there. So over the three weeks we've had, we've integrated this system where we have the gear profile CNC'd into the plate itself, and it's run by a Neo 550 inside of this gearbox plate. We use these small small bearings to basically give no friction, so we're allowed to move as free as possible. And Hendrik can give you a little demo right here. 
You have a relatively unique climber as well. Can you walk us through what that looks like and how your hook design yeah. came about? So we, you notice we have the, the triple climb hooks here. That allows us to be able to climb with all directions of the robot. So it helps, helps us harmonize a little bit better because of our shape, we're a little bit wider. So we can climb sideways, be more incorporated with other people. And over on this side, we have a chain that we borrowed from Team 3005, the RoboChargers. So that allows us to keep very nice tension and very smooth climb. I keep a package really small. So, and we decided to do chain driven because belts, there's a little bit too much tension on the belts. So the chain's a little bit stronger. And then for, yeah, we have a 90 degree gearbox down here to help us package because it's very tight in this whole area. And yeah, so we really like this climb design. Fantastic, very uh, very innovative design from the comments. I like it a lot. Hendrik, do you want to finish us off with some software? You guys have had some really consistent Autons, really high powered and FIM. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what goes into that. Yeah, so for Auton this year, um, we started off trying to use Pathfinder and that didn't go so well for us. So we actually uh, developed a custom Auton solution for this year, um, which consists of a JSON file that we can just plug points in and then name commands as well. It's kind of like the JSON file that, uh, um, that path planner exports. We were able to run and parse that and run our Auton base on that. So instead of splines this year, we decided to go with um, straight paths to points on the field to uh, reduce um, inaccuracies of um, curving, um, I guess running on curved paths. So I guess that's a, a big um, innovation that we've done this year in software. Um, so aside from that, we have our um, custom vision solution as well. Um, ran off of a, a Raspberry Pi with uh, one single camera. Um, and we use uh, C++ with OpenCV to uh, detect the April tags. And um, this year we actually are using the gyro on the robot instead of calculating the normals on the April tag to get a more accurate uh, reading of our uh, robot position. So that enables us to um, auto shoot in, or I guess auto aim in autonomous mode and tally up. And it's, it also enhances our wheel odometry in, uh, in Auton to uh, get more accurate um, position on the field. And then in, uh, in tally up, we're able to shoot from pretty much wherever we want, close or near the speaker. Um, we can shoot um, as far as our wing line so that gives us a, a pretty good advantage um, to be able to do that. Well, Comments, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. You guys have a great robot, consistent branding all throughout, awesome engineering innovations. We can't wait to watch how you do the rest of this event as well as the rest of the season. Thank you, everybody, who tuned into this episode. Be sure to check out all the other Behind the Bumpers we have on First Updates now. Thank you for watching and have a great day. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.